What is the only science where division and multiplication go together? It's biology, because you multiply by division. So multiplication and division are... <laughs> so I was just trying to wake you up, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> Dr. Elias Zerhouni came to America for an opportunity to do medical research and became a leader in his field of radiology. Today, he is the president of Global R&D of Sanofi, a global healthcare company, where he leads an international team of researchers and scientists intent on discovering new treatments. Well, I'm the president of Global R&D. Uh, I oversee both vaccines and drugs across the company. My job essentially is to truly find the best way to innovate and to bring drugs, vaccines, new preventions to, uh, to people. It's driving, but uh, uh, all this stuff, we have to have real process. One of the issues that I see is that the industry is so cookie cutter about how it does things. There's no real different models, different ways, a spin out, a spin off, a, a joint venture, a partnership. And what I think is we need a bigger toolbox. Sure. So as you can see, we have a terrific group of scientists, very sophisticated, very knowledgeable, very accomplished. But when you have a large organization, it's very difficult to have all of them sort of align around common concepts, common objectives. And that's what I like to do. I like to free up the ability of people to sort of come together and understand the issues because everyone in this company is so smart and they're all smarter than me. I grew up in Algeria. I think the most important uh, factor, I think, in doing what you do is how you're brought up and what values your family really tries to impart. And in my case, my father in particular was a teacher, uh, put a lot of value on, on education. I always thought that I would be either a physicist or an engineer. And, um, and frankly, my family, both my father and my mother, thought that doctors were not very smart. But I had an experience when I was a student. I went uh, to volunteer uh, in, uh, in the mountains in Algeria, and I saw how poor people you know, suffered from lack of health. And, and that touched me, you know, and I said, you know, it's probably a, a better choice uh, to be a doctor. And then when I became a doctor, mm -hmm. one of my uncles, who's a radiologist, showed me the first CAT scan image that was uh, obtained in the world. And you could see inside, you could see a tumor, and then he explained to me, he said, well, you know, it's an x-ray tube that runs around, gets data, it's processed in the computer, it has a lot of physics in it. And I said, this is it. This is what I find to be the best mix, if you will, of physical sciences, what I was always enjoying, as well as biological sciences, which I wanted to really contribute to. So the marriage of the two is what made me decide uh, that I would be an imaging scientist. And so I talked to my uh, professors, and they all recommended, they said, you know, the best thing for you would be to go abroad, and there are only two places you can go, it's Sweden or the United States. And that's how I ended up arriving at Johns Hopkins uh, as a visiting, visiting scholar. When we came to Baltimore, we were shocked at the state of the city. I mean, it was mo much more rundown than Algiers was. And so we were like a little bit taken aback and said, well, my God, this is, a very different picture than what you have on the TV. Went through at Johns Hopkins and was doing research. I um, worked on the concept of quantitative imaging. In those days, medical imaging was looking at pictures, but it was not quantitative. It didn't really calculate values to say, okay, what can I extract from that picture? I had the idea of measuring calcium to differentiate tumors which have low calcium from benign lesions that have high calcium in the lung. I created an application to, pre to prevent surgery from being performed. Well, that wasn't really done before. People noticed that. And that's the wonderful thing about America, is that people recognize merit and give you a chance. Is the hub something that can facilitate, accelerate, encourage, uh, innovate in the one thing that makes us different? And that is to generate a, a drug or a therapy that will change people's lives. If you don't innovate, you're, you're broke. But if you innovate, you have a chance. I can't guarantee that it will, but you have at least a chance to succeed. 
Now, I got a call one day from the White House, actually in December uh, of 2001, so a couple of months after 9-11. And uh, when they called me, I said, are you sure you're, you have the wrong, you must have the wrong number. I mean, come on, uh, you really want to talk to me? And they say, yes, yes, we hear good things about you. We want to, to hear, and we want to tell you what we want to do at the NIH. And I'll be the first immigrant in, uh, in charge of the NIH. I had to think deep about whether or not I would take the job because um, in those days, as you know, it was post 9-11. There was a lot of turmoil about, um, you know, the, the Arab world. Um, and I thought about it. And two things really um, convinced me that I, need, I needed to do this. Number one, I felt gratitude uh, to America because I was treated well. I was given a chance. And if you've been well treated, you need to give back. And frankly, I thought public service was the best way to give back. So that was one uh, motivation. The second was really for my children and our community, because I think that we were beaten down, really, by all the 9-11 events, and people were painting with a broad brush who we are. And we have, like every other society, bad apples and terrific apples. And I thought for my own children, too, to show them that, you know, you can make it here. Let me explain exactly why the President is so grateful for your service. You have left NIH better than you found it. Very, very important. You have directed, led NIH in such a way that it is clearly understood by everybody here that the goal is to spend the $29, $28 billion, the taxpayers' money, effectively, and most importantly, more effectively every year. There is a mindset here. Well, after I left the NIH, I was asked to also become an ambassador, a, um, a special envoy, presidential envoy for President Obama in science and technology to, to, to bring um, more collaboration between the U.S. and the Muslim world. So we went around, visited many countries, tried to identify what would make a real difference. Because if, if people are sharing knowledge, through science, because science is a universal language, they're more likely to also bring peace. And we need that. For Arab Americans, I encourage them, don't, don't shy away from being involved. Be involved, participate, contribute, because at the end, that is what will make a difference.